Hey, we got a good show lined up for you today. 20 years into the internet for the auto industry. To me, that's the biggest change of what's going on. Well, hey, we're at the top of the hour, so uh, we are officially live. So folks that are, are trickling in here on Facebook, welcome to today's Auto Converse on air live broadcast. Uh, I'm Ryan Girardi. Today is February 28th, the last day of the month. So what, what better day to go live for the dealer community than on the last day of the month? So, oh, so yeah. They're, they're going to be flooding in here, man. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they're not selling anything today. So, but you know, we do record this. Uh, we, re I re-release it with some slight edits out as a video. Uh, so if you're watching the video version of this, welcome. Thanks for being here. And if you're listening on the podcast, thanks for being, uh, listening on the podcast as well, which we launched just, uh, just this month and, uh, it's starting to pick up some steam. So really excited about that. Uh, got a great show. As you can see, I've got Mike Phillips and Mike Carrera here with me today, and we're going to get into a couple, of, a couple of topics related to advertising and social branding. Uh, but just to give folks a, a little orientation, uh, Mike Carrera left the retail side after about 30 years of sales management and building his store's online brands, and he opened his own firm to assist other dealers. He says he got tired of seeing dealers pay top dollar for subpar social media efforts and not know the difference. So now he has his own consulting business and that's gonna be part of our conversation today. And, and welcome, Mike, it's great to, uh, to have you up here for the first time. Good to be here, man, thank you for the opportunity. And Mr. Mike Phillips, you've been in the dealership business, I think over 15 years, you've done sales, management, BDC, pretty much all of it. Uh, I think you serve on the board of directors for the local Better Business Bureau. And what excites me about what you do when we met uh, late last fall is you really get into business coaching and training. You run, uh, you, you run a, a, I don't even know what to call it. It's lead the team. It's a website. It's a blog. You have your podcast, which I'm now starting to listen to. Uh, Thank you. Which by the way is a, is an epic Hollywood uh, opening stinger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. So, um, so very cool stuff. So lead the team.net or, uh, his video blogging is on lead the team.tv. And Mike, I know you have a passion for learning and helping others to grow, which is what your podcast is about. Absolutely. You, you think no one cares, but I love that you said you enjoy long mountainous walks because <laughs> there are no mountains here where I live and I miss that. <laughs> Yeah, def definitely. Thank you so much for, for having me on the show. And it's really good to meet Mike Carrera. <laughs> so I'm excited, man. I'm excited for today. You know, it is. And that's a good example I want to share with everyone that's watching here is, you know, Mike, Mike Phillips and I met recently. Mike Carrera, you and I met at least a couple of years ago, but we've all three of us have interacted for years mm -hmm. virtually. And so that's one of the I think beauties of these on, of an on-air broadcast is the opportunity to get face to face and and more personalized. And so 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 we're accomplishing that that objective here today. And for those watching, you know, we we welcome we welcome great minds and great personalities to come up here and 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 be part of this experience as well. So um, so good stuff. So a couple of so we're going to get into knowing where your ad budget is. And then we're also going to explore personal branding through the use of social media. Before we get into that, though, just a couple of news items. Mike Phillips, I think yes. you guys got broken into. Your dealership actually got broken into last week. It, it did. It was uh, unfortunate. It was random. Uh, it was a guy. We're, we're kind of in a central uh, area uh, of town. We're not in like the auto mall area and so forth. And so we have a bunch of, of other businesses and uh, restaurants, bars, et, et cetera, around. We're actually in a really good area. And unfortunately, it just became a, a random act. And it, middle of the night on, on Saturday, it seemed that this guy, we, you know, it, this is actually the, the photo that you have on the screen here is actually kind of our internet sales department and our BDC. Mm. And we, you know, if, if, for those that work in a BDC, we have a lot of people that we all participate in buying groceries for the week. And so we were kind of surprised uh, of anything that this, the thief could have done was we figured he would at least break in and eat some oatmeal cream pies or, 
or uh, some ramen or something, but he, he didn't even do that. He, he came in and just kind of wandered around, uh, tried on a few cars and so forth, and then left us with a, a few broken doors and some damage, which w for us, you know, being an innovative dealer, we thought, well, let's have a doorbuster sale. You know, so we're talking about like paying the doors and we're going to do a doorbuster sale. So if anybody's watching this from, from my feed, come on down, you know. <laughs> So no one was hurt. Nothing was really no. stolen or like cars weren't damaged or anything. No, we had uh, really not, not at all. It was just uh, vandalism more yeah. than anything. It was and somebody, just random, not targeted. Yeah. No, not targeted. We, we checked into that and it was, you know, our, our local police were, at, they actually handled it really phenomenal, phenomenally uh, came through and, and checked everything out, contacted us and management and our owners and, everything was actually very streamlined. The advantage that this picture of the dog that you have on the screen there, his name's Dax, his birthday is actually this week. And the, the advantage of them using a canine unit is there was not any violence or, you know, no gunfire, no, nothing crazy. They sent the, the canine unit in and to watch this dog on video is actually pretty, pretty unbelievable. You know, the way, how well trained and everything. I'm glad no one was hurt. And, yeah. um, and I, I just thought it was funny because you brought it up. But, you know, switching gears on a more serious front, and, and, and Mike, see, I, I think you said we do see this all too often. A yeah. recent announcement of, of ID, scam, you know, ID theft scam. Uh, and in this case, it was, the transaction was done all through email and electronically. I don't know if you read the article, but it sounds like the sales yeah. rep never actually got on the phone with the person. That's where you miss it. I think mm -hmm, with, with the availability of technology as we've had it, uh, just recently in the last year, I've had both vehicles to Hawaii and Florida, and I asked the customer to Skype with me. We had video you know, conference going over all the details of the deal. I had verification of his license and insurance, everything up front before any vehicle was put on any truck and sent out, especially to Hawaii. It goes into a container and sent out. Um, there are safeguards you can can use, and if you're not using them with the availability of them, you, you kind of you know it's not like shame on you, but kind of shame on you. There's no reason for it in today's world. Ten years ago, twenty years ago, it was rampant and it happened more often than than we would have liked. But today, there's no real excuse that it should happen like this. So it's not, unfortunate, but it's not it's not something that should happen. So now dealers have the tools to to avoid this. Now, what puzzles me is is in the article. Uh, it states that if you saw the price tag, it was eighty-eight thousand dollars was the yeah. was the was the total because that includes the additional warranty, and the gap. gap everything. But what puzzles me is the warranty and the gap only matters if you own the car. It's not like you're getting the money. So in order to benefit from those, if you have the car, but you can't benefit from those because you're tied to it. So, so in that sense, I'm puzzled by how that actually works. It just shows that that the person doing the transaction was willing to go along with anything. Yeah. And that kind of created that euphoria on the sales manager side. Like I did, got this guy on the hook. He's buying everything I'm throwing at him. Would you want <laughs> warranty? You want mop and glow? You want this? You want alarm? You want? And the guy's like, sure, put it in there. Too good Don't to be true. Well, I so, agree with Mike on that. If I can jump in, I think it creates a legitimacy too, because then you think, oh, well, the guy's buying this. He's going to keep the car for a little bit. He's protecting himself and and so there it, it creates an air of legitimacy as much as there can be via email or i agree with mike there you, you know you've got to get on the phone and interact with someone or to this day and age get on a video conference and and actually speak face to face with that person that you're conducting the transaction with you know do your menu presentation via video chat and so forth yeah i mean there's all this i think pressure and uh, you know the idea around being able to buy a car without you know without talking to a salesman um, then you get something like this and 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 what you realize is that we really do need to make it about th that that human transaction because this might have been avoided in that case um, folks 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 that are live thanks again for joining us you're here auto converse on air mike carrera mike for mike phillips we're about to get into a couple of discussions around uh, around at your advertising budgets and social branding. Real quick before we segue into that, I'm just going to bring something on screen. Uh, just uh, just this week, we rolled out a an, a really nice interview that I had with Tim James, who's the COO of Flick Fusion. Flick Fusion is a truly powerful video marketing solution designed for car dealers to 
to sell cars and do branded videos both at the sale at the variable and fixed ops level. You can check out a portion of that interview. Uh, it'll be on Blog Pro later this week. So go to blogproautomotive.com and you can check that out. And if you want the full version, just submit your information and you'll immediately get access to that full version and you'll be able to see the Flick Fusion uh, system live in action as well. So if you like that for your dealership, you'll have an op opportunity to test drive that. Mike, C, I'm going to bring up, if I can find it, the article you shared. Yeah, there it is right there. See that? Uh, the story of the boy, unfortunately, getting bleach poured into his eye. But what you're sharing is the, the ad on the left. Right. This yeah. is uh, the worst product placement you can ever see. And there's been many examples of this kind of stuff. My friend Will McGinnis actually originally shared it. And I wanted to, to send it out as well because I've been talking about this for years. You know, if, if you're not online and you don't have a presence, you don't know how to inspect what you expect. And if you're not careful, your, your spend is going to go places that you may not want it to go. This is really unfortunate for Clorox, really unfortunate. But dealerships can get themselves caught in the same type of thing. Mm -hmm. This is caused technologically through contextual uh, advertising, where the, the ad exchange that's responsible for serving this ad up sees the word bleach and displays the bleach right. ad. There's not realizing more, it's a negative. Right. And there's more sophisticated semantic technologies out there that, that should avoid this. So, you know, a deal, an advertiser can't control this. What can a dealer do to minimize this or, or avoid this from happening? They can ask. There's no, there's no harm in asking your vendors, where is my ad getting spent? What are you doing with my ad? Where are my banners being posted? And the more you ask, the more you show those companies that you are attentive and they're not just going to fall asleep at the wheel and they're going to man it correctly. But if your ad showing up in thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of places, how can, you, how can a dealer monitor and audit that? Is that even feasible? It's, it's not possible to see every place that it's going to get spent, but if you're attentive to it, you can minimize the chances of something like this happening. It's, it's, there's always going to be, that's why they pop up periodically. There's always going to be that one random chance that it, it populated in the wrong place that you can't control, but to be on top of it, and you want to be able to get out and do damage control. If you see something like this, if you're online and you're watching your dealership's presence and you see something, at least you can head it off the pass. You can address it. And there's many examples of companies that have, turned potential nightmares into positives. Look at um, Kentucky Fried Chicken, what they did in, in England. They ran out of uh, chicken and they took out a full page ad that really addressed it head on. They took responsibility for it and it's really turned into a positive for them, even though nobody could buy their chicken in England. So does this require a deeper level of understanding the technology that of what maybe what ad exchange that you're on? Does it come down to understanding the your the maybe the vendor partner that that is responsible for your advertising and you really have to have a, a deeper technological understanding of of you know, things like this that could happen i think you have to care care enough to know That's where it. your company's showing up online investigate and spend a few minutes to to look around and get the feedback work with your vendors not just pay them a couple bucks and have them take over the keys to your digital uh, domain and and you know end up with a, a digital strikeout. So I'm looking at comments here. And by the way, Micah Burkholz says, what up, Mike C? So giving you a shout out. Uh, Amanda says, reputation rescue may be required. And I'm, I'm having a feeling, do you know reputation rescue? Isn't that Renee? That's reputation revenue. Oh, revenue. Re My bad. So reputation Amanda- Rescue is the reputation management. Okay. Or so that begs the question, and, and Mike Phillips, maybe you have some thoughts on this. Can, can, I mean, a reputation solution can't really help you in this case. I, I think it goes back to Mike C's comment is that you have to care. I mean, we're, for, for us, we do a lot of stuff at a grassroots level from within the dealership. And so when we're running it, I mean, you have to ask yourself the question, when's the last time you looked at your website as a consumer? When's the last time you shopped your inventory as a consumer? And a lot of people, you know, dealers, general managers, general sales managers, they go, well, I'm just one person. And, and we get so numb to the way that we operate from within the industry. We don't go around to the outside and actually care what the consumer is seeing. And keep in mind, even we're, we're an independent dealership. 
we have, you know, six, eight people that are directly within our BDC center. And we'll ask them from time to time, hey, what are you seeing on, you know, because we advertise on Facebook. So wh where have you seen us on Facebook? Where have you engaged in the ad? Because it, a BDC person is going to see something differently than a salesperson or somebody in management. And so I, I think that's the core statement, as Mike C said, is, well, you have to care. There's more so than any other technology or all these other technological tools, if you care about what's going on in your store, you, you can enlist a lot of just basics to go out and look at the stuff, you know, because people will see this. You, you have it up on the screen. Somebody in your store, if you're asking them, will have seen this and they'll, you know, if they're attentive to it, will we'll be like, hey, uh, we we got something out here. You need to go look at this. And so then you can come in from a uh, a proactive position rather than a reactive position like, oh, crap, we placed our ad in the wrong spot or somebody placed our ad in the wrong spot. So to speak. If I can give you one more example. Sure. About a year ago, um, the auto group I was working for has a social media company managing all their posts and stuff. And because I followed the dealership I was working for online, I saw a post on Instagram and it was just a, a random stock photo of a car driving. And the, the heading was, you must be the cure for Alzheimer's because I can't get you out of my mind. That jumped out of me and I was blown away that they would post that. I immediately went to the general manager and he was not really getting it. He was like, what's the problem with it? You know, why is that such an issue? So I called the, the social media company myself and mm -hmm. I actually had to convince them that that was not a post that I felt was characteristic of the dealership that was promoting our culture that was saying hey buy from us it was really not well done it was it was it was unacceptable and uh, they agreed to have it taken down but they didn't really see the problem with it and that to me was the problem but if I wouldn't have seen that it would have been out there and, and consumers if they would have come across <laughs> that in their Instagram feed who knows if someone you know someone's dad has Alzheimer's someone's relative that could really strike a negative right. chord and it wasn't intentional. Someone thought that was witty and creative, but the general manager and multiple people, they, they aren't online. They aren't interested. They don't have the, the desire because they're too busy running their business. So they just trust that somebody else is doing it. And that's what I'm saying. You've got to be interested in what those people are doing on your behalf. Well, and I think that you brought up a, a good, you having to convince them, the reason you had to convince them is because that social media company, that advertising company, they can provide how relevant they are. They can say, hey, no, we're relevant. Look at all the, the likes and the, and the stuff because- Oh yeah, lots of pretty graphs. We yeah. got click-throughs, we got viz visibility and engagement. But are they good ones? Uh, you, you don't want those kind of click-throughs and engagements. And so, it, right. I mean, but, there, but, but by being able to come in around and say, well, no, Mr. General Manager, we're relevant. And here's why there's this, 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 and this. And by the way, you need to up your ad spend so we can do more of it. And it's like, slow down, look at what the message is. Right. You guys, I right. got to apologize for laughing because <laughs> Micah Burkholz says, this is why I stopped tweeting get VD from me. He says, I now spell out Vista Dash instead. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> oh, Micah, that's too good. But every, what I'm hearing everybody say is, you, the takeaway here is you have to care. You have to pay attention. And then, Mike, see, I'm going to let you kind of put some closure to this. What's your recourse? You, 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 you run into this by paying attention. And what is your recourse? You pick up the phone, you call your, your advertising partner and you say this needs to be addressed? Definitely, definitely. You need to be involved with them. When, and, and believe me, working in the dealership spectrum for 30 years, I know what it's like for vendors when they stop in. Uh, the GM or whoever they want to speak to is always busy. He's got all kinds of things going on. So it's impossible to get them to sit down and, and give you a few minutes. But the GMs that are blowing off all those vendors that they work with really need to stop and say, you know what? I need to make, a few minutes for this guy because he's representing my company and I need to know more about what's being said on our behalf out there. Um, the social media company, when I called them, they, they kind of poo pooed me off and said, well, you know, all our staff have uh, marketing degrees and we understand that marketing is kind of technical and you probably won't, you know, wrap your head around it as just a car salesman, but you can trust us that we know what we're doing. And, and I didn't feel that was the case. And because the general manager wasn't paying attention, that was allowed. The, I think we're the, the I, I know we keep going back and forth, Ryan, you'll get in here at one point. Uh, the, the, uh, the thing is, if you're going to spend $1 with a, a vendor, 
with a third party. If you're going to spend $1 with them, you're investing monetarily in that person. You have to invest at some point in the relationship. I mean, it's, <laughs> you're investing in something, you've got to invest in that relationship. Give them five minutes and, and communicate with the person. It doesn't mean you have to be friends. You don't have to have them over for the weekend barbecue, but for goodness sake, you got to have a conversation with them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Put the time in. All right. So, so good guys. You, uh, there are things you can do and it starts with putting time and attention to it, paying attention, taking action and getting to know where, you know, where your ads are being displayed and, 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 and just being proactive about it as best you can. So thanks for bringing Managing that up. Managing your dealership's online presence requires understanding it. And that means it's going to take an investment of a little bit of time. I agree. And, you know, this speaks to something I believe uh, intently is that we, you, we need qualified, trained, knowledgeable people working in, in these dealerships. You know, yeah. I, I commend, you know, folks like both yourselves that – that you know, take the time to learn and grow and understand, and we are seeing more of that. Uh, you know, the dealer turnover has, is is known as a as a challenge in the dealership business, uh, but in dealers need to invest into into training and skills for their for their employees to know, because uh, this is this is money, and this has a this has a bad effect. Let's segue that into the topic, uh, Mike Phillips, that that you propose, but I also know is really passionate for Mike Carrera, which is, uh, I'll speak to it as personal branding, uh, and specifically around the sales side. So uh, Mike Phillips, maybe you could open up, you know, your thinking on this uh, for this part. My thinking is when, and we go through with our sales team and we encourage them to personally brand themselves, to be involved and engaged on social media, to be engaged online. Because ultimately, I think right now, especially, there is so much, um, the, there's so much unengagement online. Like you can go to Amazon and you can order something. It takes five minutes. You don't have to be engaged with anybody or anything. It's point, click, order, done, right? So people want to do business with, I, I think in the car industry, people still want to feel like they know somebody that they can trust. They, everybody wants a guy or a gal, right? They want someone that they can depend on. So they want someone that they can look at online and see who the person is and see that they're genuine. And because authentic. that's, what's that? Uh, is authentic. Authentic. That, that, you know, they feel like they know them already, but they want to know that they have the backing of a, you know, real brand or a, a real company. So I think when it comes to personal branding, I think it's one thing to go on and, there are many places that we have online that we have individuals that are far more uh, engaged on social, for, for lack of a better word, you know, they have a whole bunch of engagement and around the community and so forth than even the dealership brand page. People will check out that person. They'll look and see that they're real. And then they'll go and say, okay, well, where does this person work? I'm going to go check that out and make sure it's just legit. If that's legit, then, you know, they're going to follow through and, I almost knocked my water over. See, I, I brought this just for uh, Mike Carrera today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's good. So, That's good. so yeah, as far as the personal branding, I think it's in any sales environment, whether it's automotive sales, whether it's, you know, realtors, anybody in business, I think has to have some level of engaged personal branding. So uh, I'm going to segue into Mike C on this because so Mike Phillips, I think a lot of us agree, I know I do, but it also poses, poses some challenges and conflicts mm -hmm. between the dealership brand and the personnel. Uh, Mike Davenport is probably one of the more prominent you know, brands out there as a, as a car sales professional. If anyone knows Mike Columbus, he's been on our show a couple of times and he switched from one dealership to another on different sides of the country, but stayed yep. within the Honda brand. Mike, see, you've, you've gone from different brands, but I've always known you more as a Ford guy, but you hit, a, you hit kind of the ceiling with your personal brand because it, it kind of, from the, dealership's pers from the dealer's perspective, you were in a sense competing. So, so, you know, where do we go from there? There is a limitation. The limitation is really simple to sum up. It's fear. There's still a lot of fear in dealership management that the salespeople's prominence online is going to overwhelm the dealerships 
Um, and, and Mike Phillips, you got to know you're in the, the top 1% of dealership management. I love your philosophy. I think it's, it's a philosophy that should be adopted across the board. But unfortunately, until the dinosaurs that are still so prevalent in this business die off, there's going to be that restriction. I was accused that the Mike the Car Guy brand is actually a bigger brand than the dealership I was working at. And they were worried that if I left the store, that I would take a, a customer base with me. And I said, my counter to that is don't let me leave. Let's, let's create an environment that I want to get up every day and I can't wait to get here because anyone that's following me knows where I work. They go hand in hand. So you guys are actually benefiting from the exposure that I'm bringing you. And if you think it's, it's more exposure than you're getting on your own, that's great. You're not paying for it. I yeah. work here and I'm proud to work here. It needs to be a 50, it needs to be mutually beneficial to both parties at a 50-50 keel. But what you said is not a result of, the, of digital technology and modern tools. For, for decades, if you had a great sales professional, he built relationships and that dealership didn't want to lose him because he, he, would, take his cust- he would take his customers with him. So, right. so that's not a modern dilemma. That, like you said, that's maybe a misunderstanding that it, that it might be and it's not. Well, from the management perspective in store, we've always said, like you're, you're saying, Ryan, we, anybody who is at any level of management within automotive sales has always said, look, we want the dealership to generate 50% of the traffic. We want the salespeople to generate 50% of the traffic. Well, now it seems to be becoming more accessible and more prevalent. And now it's like, whoa, wait a minute. We didn't really mean that. We, we didn't really mean we wanted you to generate 50% of the traffic because then you run into things like Mike C said, and, and you, you're right. It's not a technology thing. If you look at, you know, Ali Rita, who is huge right now, he's all over automotive. He, he has done. Speaking of Ali, yeah. just give him a little plug. It's a great little book. There you so go. go. Yeah. He, but he's all over the place, but he's all about personal branding through relationship. It's not mm-hmm. personal branding through social media. He's big on social media right now because yeah. everybody else on social wants to engage him and is like, what's the secret sauce? How did you do it? How do you do it on social media? And he's like, I don't. <laughs> right. It's through the relationship. Amanda, right. So Amanda's online and, and she actually speaks to that. She says, personal branding needs to have a strategy. Some people believe that they have a personal brand because they're on social and they don't actually have a strategy in place. And I think you said that in your own words, which is it's about the relationships and the people, the digital, the social aspect is a right. means to that end. That's how he has succeeded because he's, he's developed his relationships and that's just expanded into other areas. He didn't go out onto the scene and then start building relationships. You know, if you're doing it with authenticity, it'll come through that way. If you just jump online and start broadcasting, hey, I sell cars, hey, I got low prices, hey, I got great interest, it's not going to work. But if you're online sharing things that are interesting to you and you're building relationships and people are attracted to that, you're going to create your own digital book of business that is a powerhouse. Ironically, I, I had a salesperson reach out to me yesterday, which was a huge compliment from states away and says, hey, listen, you, you know, they happen to watch my podcast and so forth. And they were talking about branding and well, look, how do I do it on social? And uh, said to me, look, I'm a little bit of an old school uh, car salesperson. What, what, what are you doing on social? How do you get engaged in it? And I said, it doesn't have to be about so my, my perception. And this is just a candid conversation between me and a, and a salesperson who was willing to pick up the phone, lose that fear, right, Mike, and say, okay, well, I'm going to reach out and figure out how to do this. It's not necessarily about social when you're personally branding something. You find what you're good at and what you're passionate about, and then you exploit it. If exactly. you're good at if you're good at networking in the community, go get involved in civic groups and and serve on uh, you know boards of directors and so forth. If you're good at social and you're technologically advanced, then then get it all over the place. You know, find what you're good and passionate about and exploit that, and that'll fuel your your fire as a salesperson. That'll fuel your fire in your personal brand. It's like what you did, Mike, you, right? You, you got excited about it and you got pumped up about it. You didn't hit a wall until somebody else told you, Hey, you can't do that. And you're like, yeah, watch this. <laughs> so Mike, 30 seconds to just to wrap Mike P to wrap this up. You have a personal brand that's focused on leadership and coaching. Does your dealership benefit from that in any way directly or indirectly? I, I would say yes, I would hope so. I mean, our, our salespeople, many of our salespeople will tune in and, and watch uh, my shows and listen to my shows. And so it's not, 
something that I'm just saying to them. It almost becomes a third party sometimes because they'll tune in and say, well, it must be legitimate because it's online, right? And then uh, also we, we do have, uh, I mean, that's how I ended up on the, the board with the, the Better Business Bureau is they reached out on my brand and said, well, do you want to, to do this? And our owner says, well, heck yeah, you know, I, would, I, I think it'd be great to, to see the inner workings of the BBB. That's, that's kind of a, an indirect benefit. But then we do have people that will reach out to, to me personally, and I'll pair them up with a, a salesperson. So the salespeople like that because someone's saying, hey, I saw this online or saw that online. You seem like a pretty legit guy and, and we want to buy a car from you. And so I'll usually engage and, and interact one-on-one -on -one with that customer and with the salesperson. Okay. All right. Great. Well, guys, great subjects. And like, like all subjects, we could, we could dedicate an hour or two hours to those, but we are going to wind things down and folks that are here live. Thanks for, for tuning in and, and sharing your, your input on these subjects and, and being part of the conversation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and just put some closure to this next week. We've got Mr. Frank Lopes coming on to join us. If you want to get some more Frank, be here, same time, same place. Mike C, Mike P, great to have you and can't wait to have you guys both back. Thank you so Thanks. much. Look forward to it. Follow Mike yeah, Phillips. He's rocks. The guy's amazing. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Thank you. You guys are both amazing. So I'm, I'm really humbled to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and if you want to check out Mike Phillips' podcast, just search for The Front in your podcast app and uh, put the headphones on because it is an epic opening. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you next week.